What's up everybody, Gen X Dividend Investor here. In this video I'm excited to show you a bunch of new records for dividend payments in my multi-million dollar portfolio, including most dividends paid out in a day, most in a week, and what's estimated to be the most ever for a full month. So if dividends get you hot and bothered then please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and click that bell notification. Thanks, I really appreciate your support. Here's a screenshot I took on Thursday, June 10th, 2021 from my Fidelity dividend accounts. I blocked out some areas with information I didn't want to share. You can see that I have three dividend portfolios here, my dividend IRA account worth $1.09 million, my dividend taxable account worth $1.26 million, and my wife's dividend rollover IRA account worth about ninety-six dollars So that's about $2.45 million in the dividend portfolios. So you can see I hold about 50% of the dividend stocks in taxable accounts and 50% in tax sheltered accounts. One of the mistakes I made when we got married was I didn't push to open up retirement accounts for my wife. Her jobs have been hourly and often didn't have 401k plans, and I made the mistake of not capitalizing on contributing to retirement accounts for her for a long time. I corrected that mistake a few years ago. Anyways, on the bottom of this screenshot are dividends I received on June 10th. So Chevron paid a dividend of about $625 in my taxable account, and Chevron paid me a dividend of $246 in my IRA account. Microsoft paid a dividend of $230 in my IRA, and they paid a dividend of $209 in my taxable. ExxonMobil paid a dividend of $1,133 in my taxable, and they paid a dividend of $513 in my IRA. So all these added up together ended up being a single payday record of $2,959. Now, I've had days of dividend payouts which were larger than that if I counted special dividend one-off payments. But this is the highest single day I've had for normal recurring dividends. Okay, now I'll show you how I just got a new record for most dividends paid out in 7 days, which was during the week of June 7, 2021. On June 7th, we see that Southern Company paid me $439 in one account and $299 in another, which is about $738 in total for Southern. On June 8th, Johnson & Johnson paid me $246 in one account and $708 in another for a total of $954 of J&J. We already saw all my June 10th dividends. And tomorrow on June 12th is when 3M is doing its dividend payouts, which will total $805 for me. But since I'm filming this the day before, I'll just show you the 3M payment from last quarter for reference. So my new record for most dividends paid out in a week is at $5,457. Awesome sauce. Anyways, before I jump into my spreadsheet to show you the latest of all my dividend positions, I want to say that I've been investing for multiple decades now, and I still get blown away by dividend investing, which is by far the most passive source of income out there. So my hope is that my videos will, number one, help educate people as to what dividends are and how they can become such a powerful life-changing force in your life. And number two, help motivate people who have started their investing journey to keep at it, even if it seems slow or if things go south. I understand what it feels like when you first start investing and you only get a few cents of dividends rather than larger amounts like these I'm showing you. I've been there when my portfolio was small and my gains were slow. That's where everyone starts. What matters is if you're making decisions today to put your life trajectory on a better path. Maybe you're 50 and haven't started investing. That's okay. Maybe you're 20 and you're ready to deposit your first $50 into a brokerage account. Or maybe your portfolio is worth $100 and you estimate that at 5% yield it should make you $5 a year. What you need to focus on is that $5 a year in dividends is $5 more than you were previously were making when you weren't investing. And that's freaking awesome. It's powerful. Once you start investing your money into assets, rather than wasting on crap you don't need, then you'll be headed down a life-changing path where you become more financially secure and eventually on a path where your investments can give you one of the most precious things of all, the freedom to choose what you do with your time. Of course, please don't compare where you are in your investing journey to me or to anyone. Just compare yourself today with yourself from yesterday, and if you're taking steps that should put you on a better financial path, then that's awesome and congratulations. Make sure you're also taking baby steps to improve your relationships and your health, regardless of where you are right this second. If every week you're chomping on pizza and chips and gulping down sodas, then stop. Today. Right now. Go for a walk, and as you're walking, think about the various things in your life you'll commit to start improving. The fact that you're aware of dividends put you ahead of the far majority of people who are unaware of their potential. That being said, I personally recommend you invest both in non-dividend growth stocks as well as strong name brand dividend stocks. Okay, now I'll jump into my dividend spreadsheet product to show you the latest of all my positions. Okay, here we are in my spreadsheet, and if you see some numbers change, it's because I'm filming this on Friday during the market hours when they're open. And I will zoom in to make it easier for you.
So the first column is the ticker and I dynamically change the highlighting of the ticker based on payout dates. And so if something is highlighted in this kind of color right here, for example, 3M, it means it's paying out in a week. So 3M is paying out in a week. In fact, they're paying out tomorrow. Duke is paying out in a week, McDonald's and Realty Income. And then if it's highlighted in yellow, it means it's paying out within the next 30 days. So Altria and Pepsi and Coke, et cetera, are paying out within 30 days. And then white means it's further out than that. And so you can kind of scroll down. Yesterday I had a bunch of these highlighted in green, which means it's paying out on that particular day. But since nothing is paying out today on the 11th, nothing is highlighted in green. We've got the logo, the sector, all those kind of dynamically fill in. Uh, an account column, I can have up to six accounts that you link up. And then you can either look at this all based on one account, or you can just do all to see the aggregation of all your positions in all your accounts. The quantity of shares, so for example, Apple have 1,738 shares. The current price, the change today between yesterday's close and the percentage that is, and then how much that change in your portfolio today. And then we have the market value and the amount of passive income it drops and the percentage that that's in your portfolio, that position. So Apple is about 9% of my dividend portfolio. And then we have X date and pay date again, and these update dynamically as time goes on. And the same color coding highlighting that you saw in the first column is what's being used here. So for example, Altria, we see it has an X date of June 14th. So it's highlighting it in that kind of cyan color. And the pay date is on 7.9, which is still within 30 days. So it's highlighted in yellow. And then for dividend yield, I highlight anything in green that's greater than or equal to 4%. So you can see that a few of them are. And then we have the three year dividend CAGR, which is dynamically calculated the dividends per share per pay period that gets paid out. All that's automatic. And we have these two columns, dividends per share per year, one of which is automatic, this column. I fill in this one if uh, a company announces a dividend hike or cut before my automatic one picks it up, just so I can see the changes immediately reflected. So you don't need to fill it out and it will still work. Um, I just like to do it when these things are, are, are announced. So for example, Caterpillar announced one recently. And then we have dividends per pay period, current PEs where they can find it, a graph of how it's been trending over the last year, beta and the upcoming pay month. And then we have a calendar, you're always in the center. And so we're in June now, and then we see the previous months of dividends that you've actually gotten. And then forward looking is a forecast based on dividends you're anticipated to get. And then you've got some totals here. So if we go over my positions, we see that I have about 220 grand of Apple in my portfolio, and then 202 grand of Microsoft, followed by 148 grand of Johnson & Johnson, 142 grand of AT&T, 140 grand of Altria, 124 grand of Philip Morris, 119 grand of Exxon Mobil, 113 grand of Pepsi, 110 grand of 3M, 109 grand of Duke, and then 103 grand of Procter & Gamble, and then we have McDonald's at 97 grand, so it's almost breaking into the six digit club. Hopefully it makes it. Coke at about 93 grand, and then we have Realty Income at 91 grand. If we scroll down a bit more. We see I have Abby at 76 grand, 72 grand of Kimberly Clark, 71 grand of JP Morgan Chase, 71 grand of Southern Company, about 71 grand of Chevron, 55 grand Colgate Palmolive, 52 grand Leggett and Platt. 46,000 Starbucks, about 31,000 of Home Depot, and then we have 24 grand of Travelers and about 20 grand of Pfizer. And we can see that I have about 27,000 shares altogether between these accounts. And today my portfolio is down 0.2%, which is about down 4,700 bucks. Altogether, the portfolio is about 2.4 million and it generates about almost $82,000 a year in passive income. So once it hits 82, I'll post some little milestone video. And we can see that my portfolio's average weighted dividend yield is 3.36%, and my portfolio's average weighted three-year dividend CAGR is 7.53%. And my portfolio's average weighted PE is 23.92. My portfolio's average weighted beta is 0.82. And then the bottom shows you some of these months. And you can see here, 
that in June I'll be getting $8,653, which is a, a June record. And I actually also have a tool which you can kind of track your dividends and we see how they come in and everything highlighted in gray here are ones that are the most recent ones. And so we can see that in June so far, you know, the ones we've gotten and we see that there's still a few outstanding. So Duke is coming, Home Depot is coming, all the ones that are basically zero will be coming in. And it's kind of fun that you can track how the dividends increase over time just by kind of trending on these. And for a few of these, you'll see that the amount actually went down slightly between the two months. And that was because I transferred from E-Trade to Fidelity. And when they do that, you lose your fractional shares. And so you end up with a slightly less amount. And then any of the ones that are bigger than the previous payout is due to either buying new shares or them increasing their dividend payout. So for example, if we want to look at realty income with a monthly payer, we can see it goes from $303 in December to $304 in January, stayed there, stayed there, then they increased it slightly. And uh, so it's kind of fun to see the trend of your payments going back. Or for example, Procter & Gamble, they did a dividend increase. And so they went from $609 of payout to $669. And then these two rows are kind of fun. It shows you my annual income with no drip versus passive income with the drip starting from the current year and then it kind of goes out. So as I mentioned, I'm almost at 82 grand and about a year from now, assuming the dividend caggers hold true, that'll go up to 88 grand if I'm not dripping, which I'm not since I'm living on the income or 91 grand if I was reinvesting the dividends. And so you can see that it'll be about three years from now where I'll hit um, 101 grand or it would be two years if I was reinvesting the dividends. So you can see the power of compounding and then you can kind of scroll to the right and see as time goes on, how that dividend income can grow. So it's pretty crazy if those dividend caggers hold for 30 years, which is probably unlikely, but it's possible, then my annual dividend income would be at $723,000, which is crazy. Or if I had been reinvesting the dividends all those times, then it would have grown to $3.7 million. Down here, I made the fun little chart that shows you your yearly passive income, your monthly average passive income. So it's about $6,800 a month. Weekly average passive income at around $1,575. Daily average passive income, $224. And then hourly average passive income, which is literally including when you're sleeping and weekends and stuff. So it's actually much higher than a wage income combined with the fact that your taxation is better with dividends. So your actual wage income would be multiple times this if you took all that into consideration. And then I dynamically show how the Dow and the Dow futures and S&P 500 are all changing over time. And then here is a few graphs. This one shows you, I'll go out a little bit. So this one shows you your portfolio value percentage by sector. So we can see technology is 17%, healthcare is 10%, communication services 5.8%, synth stocks are 10.9%, energy 7.8%. We see consumer staples food beverages at 8.4%, industrials at 6.4%, utilities at 7.4%, consumer staples household goods at 9.5%, consumer discretionary at 8.8%, real estate 3.7%, and financials 3.9%. And then you also see the annual passive income percentage by sector. So you can see technology is at 4%, healthcare is about 10%, communication services 12%, SIN stocks is at 19%. Energy is at 12%, consumer staples food beverages at 7%, industrials 5%, utilities almost 9%, consumer staples household goods almost 8%, consumer discretionary 6.1%, real estate 4.5%, and financials 2.6%. All these things are kind of good to be aware of as you massage and create your portfolio. Here's my annual passive income percentage by ticker, and then we've got portfolio value percentage by ticker. And then this is a, uh, a graph that's the estimated passive income with if your drip's on versus not. And again, all of this is dynamic as any of the numbers change or as you look at um, any one account, or whatever, everything gets updated automatically. So it turns out that June will be a new record for monthly dividend payouts as well when all is set at $8,653 in one month. Very cool. If you'd like to be able to use my awesome spreadsheet to track your stocks, then sign up to support me as a Patreon aristocrat using my link in the description of this video, or just by going to patreon.com and searching for my name. 
Aristocrats gain access to my dividend spreadsheet product that I've used in this video, and to multiple private channels on my dividend discord, including one where I let my Patreon aristocrats watch my videos before I release them publicly on YouTube. And of course they get more direct access to chat with me. Thus I highly recommend that you join my free dividend discord chat server, which has thousands of dividend investors on it from 55 countries around the world. And since you watched this video all the way to the end, I'll tell you a new dad joke. Don't you hate it when someone answers their own question? I know I do. <laughs> Admit it, that joke alone is worth hitting the thumbs up button, subscribing if you haven't yet, and clicking that bell notification. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Beyond sharing dividend information, I'm also posting daily inspirational quotes and screenshots, which you'll find motivating. Another way you can choose to support me is by clicking on my Amazon affiliate link in the description of this video, and then go shopping online. As an Amazon associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Or you can click on my M1 brokerage referral link for a free $30. Read the details to ensure you qualify. Thanks for watching, stay positive, and I'll talk to you again real soon. I am not a financial advisor, and these videos are for entertainment, inspiration, and educational purposes only. Investing of any kind involves risk. I am only sharing my opinion with no guarantee of gains or losses on investments.